Hey everybody, Daryl Wong here again. Uh, wanted to show you our tractor mounted Planet Junior Cedars. Go over some of the specifics of how the cedar works, how to calibrate it, how to troubleshoot it in the field. So what you can see here is this is our particular implement. It's somewhat unique in that we have the bed shaping pan that runs as a, the same implement as the cedars and the cedars run directly behind it. This is not necessary and is not the way that most farms will run their equipment. We happen to like it because it allows us to shape and seed at the same time if we want to do that. Um, but it also allows, make sure that the seeders stay really centered in the beds um, when the seeding is done. So in this particular field, the beds are already, have already been shaped and we're just running the shaper over them again while seeding at the same time. So I want to look at the specific parts of the seeder. So this first part is the drive wheel. So all seeders will have a drive wheel that uh, creates some motion on the equipment. So as this seeder turns and moves through the soil, its movement across the ground is going to spin the shaft. It has gears here and here that will create rotation on this shaft that actually move the agitating brush inside the hopper. So the hopper is where all the seed goes, the agitating brush is inside, and you should be able to see the hole opening where the seed will go through. So once the agitator brush is spinning and the seeds are dropping through the hole, they're gonna come down through this chute. And this right here, this blue piece of metal is called the shoe. The shoe has a point down uh, the middle of the, of the shoe that's gonna determine how deep that seed gets planted by creating a, a deep slot in the soil. So that can be adjusted with this wing nut here and moving the shoe up and down on this chute. For most of the seeds that we plant um, here at Caspis is we put them about an inch, an inch and a half deep and that works for just about everything. Once the seed comes through the chute and into the trough made by the shoe, the last part is the tamp wheel. And as the tamp wheel spins, you can see it's slightly concave so that it just ju is just gonna hug the soil on top of that seed line. Some of these cedars will have additional pieces on them that gather soil ahead of the tamp wheel we happen to not have those on our cedar and it works just fine. I think depending on soil conditions, you may want those in your, on your farm. So now I wanna show you how to take the cedar on and off and how it locks in place. So this is that chute where the seed's gonna drop through and you can see that this is actually where the hopper attaches to that chute. So this is where the seed goes in to the chute and then we'll come out down below. The way that it attaches is with this cam on the bottom of the hopper and you can see that as I spin this it's shorter here narrower here and wider here so that you have the this lock in this position when you put it on top of this by rotating it on and as you pull it all the way back as that distance gets wider and wider and wider it actually locks it in place and keeps it firm so I'll take this off right now Again, by grabbing that locking arm that's behind, moving it forward, and then just simply tipping it and pulling it out. Now I wanna go a little bit in depth on the different pieces of the hopper. So what I couldn't show you before is that this is actually the on and off switch for the hopper, so that when I put it into the off position, you'll see that this just covers the seed hole where it would come out, and when I push it forward or into the on position, the seed hole opens. Under here is the seed plate, and you can see there's lots of numbers, and the numbers correspond to the hole size on the opposite side of the plate. So the larger the number, the larger the hole, the smaller the number, the smaller the hole. And there are three separate seed plates that are available for the Planet Junior seeders. Um, this is plate number two, and this is the medium sized plate, and this is probably gonna to be too large for us for our radishes that we're trying to sow today. So I'm gonna take this seed plate off. And again, this is relatively straightforward. There's a spring um, latch that uh, when it is in place, you can see this little bump out holds on these center holes on the plate. So I'm gonna pull that down to take it out of that hole and pull it out, set it carefully aside so it doesn't get lost in the soil. I'm gonna pull out this, and now the seed plate detaches. I'm gonna put my next seed plate on, and this now you can tell these holes on the outside go from very small to slightly, slightly smaller than the other plate, and this is plate number one. 
and this we would use for a lot of our small seeded crops. So for radishes, my guess is I'll be somewhere around here between maybe 10 and 13. So I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna line up my center hole, drop my cam back in, find this, and you'll see that there's this indentation on, this, on the spring clip, and that's gonna fit into this groove underneath. So I'm gonna put that in, find my groove, and make sure that I lock it in place. Again, this is my seed hole that it's coming out, so my seed number is seed number 13, if you can see that. So now, I've gone ahead and put my radish seeds, which you can see are rather large, and I've put just enough in my hopper to calibrate the seeder. So the simple way that I like to do this is, again, I'm on hole size 13. I have my seed in there. And now I use this gear and I use some visual reference on the gear. And I know that because we've measured it on the wheel is that when this gear makes a full rotation, it's the equivalent of this, the Planet Junior moving two feet in the field. And so for something like radishes that I want fairly close together, probably about one every inch, I know that I'm shooting for about 24 seeds um, for two feet. So if I spin this, and again, if I think about how this tire, this tire, the drive wheel will move, it's gonna spin this gear up, so I wanna move it in the same direction. I'm gonna to try to give it a smooth, full rotation uh, to mimic what would happen with the drive wheel. And then I've caught that seed in my hand, and right away you can tell that looks like way too much seed, right? If I put down that much seed, I'm gonna to have to spend a lot of time thinning or I'm gonna end up with a lot of really small radishes. So, I tilt the seeder over so I don't lose a lot of seed from the seed hole. I'm gonna put that seed back in, and pretty simply, I'm just gonna pop out that spring clip. That's gonna allow me to rotate this, and I'm gonna go all the way, just for demonstration's sake, I'm gonna to go to six. And I know that's too small, but I want you to see what it looks like. So now again, I'm gonna tilt it up. I'm gonna give myself a couple quick turns just to set the seeder so that it has a chance to rotate. I'm not even gonna look at that. And now again, I'm gonna find my visual reference point. I'm gonna slowly and smoothly spin it all the way for two feet. And now if I look what's in my hand, it's a lot less. So I can count two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 seeds. Um, and that's pretty close, but it's not close enough. So I know I need to adjust it a little bit more. So I'm gonna go from six, now I'm gonna jump up to eight, and we'll hope that this is our sweet spot. Shaking it down again, again, one more full rotation. And now if I look at the seeds in my hand, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So this is probably closer to maybe 26 or 30 seeds. Um, and I know that um, that's probably gonna be okay for me. I could go down to the seed hole of seven to try to get it really tight. Um, but with radishes, I know that I might have, radishes tend to germ fairly well, but this is older seed for us. This is, I'm using seed that we have um, that's about a year or two old. So I know I might not get quite as good germination. So I wanna put down a little bit of extra seed. So this seed hole eight is gonna be perfect for us. Okay, so now we've got our four seeder set up. We've got seed in all of our hoppers and we're actually gonna run this in the field. This seeder is set up more or less as you would want to have it, have it look with again, our bed shaping pan is operating pretty much parallel to the surface of the soil. What that means for the seeders themselves is that they have this rod that allows them to float both up and down um, so that as there are, is, is unevenness in the field, this spring can keep some tension and keep some press, downward pressure on the actual seeders themselves. So I'll show you what this would look like if you had it maybe not quite the right way. So if you have your top link, and on ours we have a hydraulic top link that can adjust the angle of the implement, so I had Brent extend that a lot, you can see that we're putting too much tension on these springs, too much downward pressure, 
And as a result, what's gonna happen is that these tamp wheels are just gonna push into the, into the beds a little too much and they'll create too much of a divot, which we don't really want. On the opposite side, and is it all the way lowered? Is your three point all the way lowered? Three point, it's all the way lowered? Okay. So go ahead and go more that way. On the opposite side, you can see that if we actually bottom out these stops, this is pretty obvious that it's off the ground, but that will restrict how that if these cedars can actually drop, and that won't allow us the right float. So ideally, and not all Planet Juniors are set up like this, but ideally you want to make sure that there's some give and take to the cedars when they're actually running in the field. And now we'll go ahead and have it run. So once this is gone for maybe 10 or 15 feet, what we want to do is um, look at our seed lines and make sure that we're actually dropping seed and that that depth is right. So again, I'm just gonna gently pull the soil away, and if you can see that right there, that's our radish seed, right? And again, you know, just about maybe a half an inch, an inch down in the soil, really not that deep. And ideally, I wanna see these seeds, you know, every inch or so, and you just caught a glimpse of one, but you lose them pretty quickly. And there's another seed right there kind of hard to find. But so our depth is perfect. So the last step, once we're driving through the field, if you can spare the extra person, is just to walk along and make sure that you see that the agitator brush is moving, you don't run out of seed, and also there's a nice window where if you look in between the hopper and the tamp wheel, you can actually see the seeds that are dropping before they're actually covered. And that's a nice way, if you have a seed that's visible, to make sure that the seed is working properly. And once you have it set up, you should just be able to drive. <laughs>